So we're going to continue um, verifying some identities. And the next identity that has been presented to us is 1 minus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta is equal to the cosecant of theta minus the cotangent of theta quantity squared. So step zero, we're going to decide which side we'd like to start with. Now, when I look at the left-hand side, I see that everything is already in terms of sines and cosines. We have one single fraction. There's not a whole lot of algebra that's needed here. However, on the right-hand side, I see that we don't have things in terms of the sine and cosine. I see that we have a binomial being squared. There's lots of things that I feel like I could do with the right-hand side, so I'm going to start with the right side. So with that in mind, I'm going to recopy the right-hand side. This is the cosecant of the theta minus the cotangent of theta, and we are going to be squaring that. To the right of this expression, I will start giving my justifications for each step. So first thing I'm going to do is express everything in terms of the sine and the cosine. So cosecant, using a reciprocal identity, would be 1 over the sine of theta, and the cotangent would be the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. Our justification for this step, we used a reciprocal as well as a quotient identity, which is typical when we're getting things in terms of the sine and the cosine. Now because we have two fractions that are being subtracted, they already have a common denominator, so I'm going to call this 1 minus the cosine of theta all over the sine of theta quantity squared. That would technically be a step of algebra, combining two rational expressions into one rational expression. Now here's where I'm going to use eyes on the prize a little bit. Ultimately, I want this thing to be in terms of 1 minus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. That means that the only trigonometric function that I want present is the cosine of theta. The numerator, I already have that. In fact, the numerator is already almost completely in the form that I want it to be. The denominator, however, is not. So what I'm going to do is distribute the square to the top and bottom of the fraction. That would be a step of algebra. That's how we square a fraction, is we square the top and we square the bottom. Now, anytime we see perfect squares, something to consider is the potential for a Pythagorean identity. I'm going to use that on the denominator. Reason being, I want my final answer to have the only trig function present be the sine of theta. Now that was using a Pythagorean identity. Now I mentioned this during the basic strategies, but we now have a difference of two squares and a difference of two squares factors into binomial conjugates. As I frequently say at parties when I go to parties. This is just a fancy way of saying that the denominator is going to factor really nicely into 1 minus the cosine of theta times 1 plus the cosine of theta. That of course was a step of algebra since it was factoring. You'll notice now that the numerator has a 1 minus cosine of theta and the denominator has a 1 minus cosine of theta. You can fact, uh, excuse me, cancel out one of the factors with one of the factors, leaving us with 1 minus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta, having done a step of algebra. Now when you start to get to these bigger, fancier verifications, sometimes you've got to get a little, give a little razzle-dazzle at the end of your proof. The uh, box with two slashes through it means this completes my proof and what a proof it was. Yee. Let's see if we can try out another one. Maybe a little bit challenging. For this one, we're going to verify the identity 1 minus the cotangent squared of theta over 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta plus 2 times the cosine squared of theta is all equal to 1. We are supposed to start with the more complicated side. So taking a look at the left-hand side, which is 1 minus the cotangent squared of theta over 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta plus 2 times the cosine squared of theta, and the right-hand side being 1 
I think I'm going to go with the left-hand side. So once again, I'm going to make my two columns. One column for the things that I'm doing. And one column to include the justification of the things that I'm doing. Now already I see that there are several things that I could do involving this fraction right here. For example, we could use uh, quotient identities to turn the um, cotangent squared into the cosine squared of theta over the sine squared of theta, or we could try applying Pythagorean identities. There are all sorts of things that I could do. Number one thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is put everything in terms of the sine and the cosine. We'll call this the cosine squared of theta over the sine squared of theta and the cosine squared of theta over the sine squared of theta. The justification of this, I used quotient identities to make that work. Now, similar to what we saw on the last problem, I now have fractions inside of a fraction. So I am going to multiply top and bottom of this big fraction by the sine squared of theta over 1 over the sine squared of theta over 1. I didn't leave myself room to do that, so I've got to do it over in the margin. So I'm going to distribute that through to both terms in the numerator and both terms in the denominator. First term in the numerator will become the sine squared of theta minus the cosine squared of theta. And in the denominator, this will be the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta. That was a step of algebra. We made use of the distributive property. We reduced some fractions. It was great. So you'll notice in the denominator now, we have sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, which hopefully is a very easily identifiable identity. And that is 1. That variety of identity was known as a Pythagorean identity. Now with that in mind, dividing by 1 isn't actually going to change the value of either of these things. So we can call this the sine squared of theta minus the cosine squared of theta plus 2 times the cosine squared of theta and justify that by saying uh, division by the multiplicative identity uh, doesn't actually do anything. Or just algebra, that's fine. You'll notice that there are now some like terms that we can combine. Negative cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine squared theta will be plus 1 cosine squared theta. That was combining like terms, or we can also use the blanket term of algebra. And finally, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta will be equal to 1. We can justify that step by saying Pythagorean identity. I'm going for a little bit fancier on this one. I am going back to Latin. QED stands for Quod Erat Demonstratum, roughly translated, and thus it is demonstrated. Or if you prefer, you can give it an FS, not for final solution, but rather faux shizzle.